GameRags presents the 10 new games of Gamescom 2015. This year's Gamescom was really awesome and we got a lot of great stuff. And just a disclaimer, we want you guys to know that we're only talking about games that had big official announcements at Gamescom. So games we've already known about and seen before, such as Quantum Break, Halo 5, and Crackdown 3 aren't on this list. So don't freak out, but we got a lot of other awesome games to talk about, so let's get started with number 10. Thimbleweed Park is a point-and-click adventure game in a classic 80s pixel style. Developed by game designer Ben Gilbert, known best for Maniac Mansion and The Cave, this game really embraces that whole LucasArts point-and-click adventure style game in the same vein as Escape from Monkey Island or Indiana Jones' Fate of Atlantis. After a relatively under-the-radar Kickstarter campaign, Thimbleweed Park really made its big debut at Gamescom, and it looks awesome. The game designers really stressed embracing that 80s sensibility while also not forgetting to make these games incredibly challenging just like they used to be. This isn't going to be a point-and-click adventure game for casual gamers, and we're really excited excited about that. At number 9 we have Shyness, another game that launched a relatively low-key $100,000 Kickstarter campaign that made a big splash at Gamescom this year. Shyness is kind of a weird hybrid combination of a fantasy RPG and a manga series. This is the first game being developed by a new indie French studio called Enignami, who created their own world, characters, and animation style just for this game. Along with the game, Enignami is working on a Shyness manga series to go along with playing the game and stuff. The two will apparently work hand in hand, and that's really exciting. Shyness is going to be episodic, with the first episode, The Lightning Kingdom, apparently launching in the first quarter of 2015. At number 8, we have Attack on Titan. After the fairly decent but repetitive 3DS game, Attack on Titan is finally getting the full console treatment it deserves, with a game releasing for PS4, PS3, and PlayStation Vita. Created by Koei Tecmo, it's being developed by the creators of the Dynasty Warrior game, so that's pretty awesome, right? The trailer didn't really give us much other than a pre-rendered, stylistic cinematic with our main heroes facing off against the classic Colossal Titan. And that's great, and it looks wonderful, especially if that's what the graphics are gonna be like, embracing that cel-shaded animated style that goes hand-in-hand -hand with the animated cartoon. Awesome! We don't really know too much more about this one, but me personally, as being a huge Attack on Titan fan, this is at the top of my most anticipated list immediately. I just really hope they get the gameplay and controls behind the three-dimensional movement system right. Because in the animated series, that's one of the most incredible ways to move around ever, and I hope it's as fun in the game. At number 7, we have Dragon Age Descent. In this upcoming DLC expansion coming out very soon, you venture deep below the surface of Thetis to discover the source of mysterious earthquakes. Apparently this is a perilous journey underground where there's a bunch of dark spawn infested caverns everywhere. So basically that means there's a lot of stuff to kill with your Inquisitor. Dragon Age Inquisition to Descent introduces memorable new characters, really breaks open the lore of dwarven history, and adds a bunch more loot to collect on your quest. This looks like a pretty good shake of the Inquisition formula since most of it is spent roaming the open world of Thetis. This time around you're underground with a bunch of caverns and tombs to explore, so it looks like a lot of fun. At number 6 we have Hard West, a top-down, turd-based tactical RPG in which you fight and survive through 8 different story-based scenarios. If these 8 story-based scenarios don't seem like a lot to you, just know that they are massive and they contain over 40 different unique missions. The turn-based combat focuses on squad gameplay on a team of 1 to 4 and really embraces using special abilities. Even though it seems pretty turn-based and average, the Wild Wild West setting is dark and creepy and kind of fantasy and really makes the game stand out. It's a unique take on a familiar style of game and we can't wait to give Hard West a try. At number 5 we have City Skylines After Dark. This add-on expansion to City Skylines was announced at Gamescom and it really makes total sense and adds a whole nother layer to an already awesome game. After Dark is a nocturnal expansion in which day and night changes in the city and affects citizen schedules. For example, traffic is visibly slower at night and some zoned areas don't work with full efficiency, changing traffic patterns. Not only does the game now have a deeper day and night cycle, but it also adds leisure specialization for commercial areas, including going to the beach. City services are also going to be expanded and fleshed out in the game, with criminals being transported from police buildings to actual prisons, taxis going out on the streets in certain different times, and an international airport will allow for much greater volumes of traffic. Seriously though, you've probably seen City Skylines in a lot of our top 10 lists because the game is just so awesome, so After Dark really just makes it even better. At number 4 we have the announcement of Blizzard's latest World of Warcraft expansion, Legion. World of Warcraft features the demons of the Burning Legion pouring into the world. The Alliance and Horde are apparently at the end of their rope, so you have to take up Warcraft's most legendary artifacts in order to challenge and defeat the Legion and save Azeroth. This expansion gives players the new environment of the Broken Isles to play in and explore. They also added a new class called Demon Hunter which looks absolutely badass. The game of course also features all new dungeons and raids, new world bosses, a level cap raised to 110 and a revamped PvP progression system that players are really excited about. So if you are still playing World of Warcraft, or if you've been looking for another reason to jump back in, Legion is looking pretty tempting and pretty awesome. 
At number three, we have Stellaris. Paradox Interactive has announced their latest, which is Stellaris, which is a huge, ambitious galactic space battle strategy game. According to Paradox, there's a huge variety of alien races to choose from, as well as a massive procedurally generated galaxy to explore. The game systems are really deep because everything can be randomized from the star systems to different alien races. If that sounds familiar, it's probably because it kinda is, but this time around, it's on a massive scale. And if you can tell from the video, this game looks really impressive. At number two, we have Halo Wars 2. This was a huge surprise at Gamescom, surprising hardcore fans of this underrated RTS title. This was probably one of the best RTS games released for Xbox 360, and it's really good that it's getting a sequel. Halo Wars 2, however, is being developed by a new studio, coming from 343 Industries and Creative Assembly, the guys who made Alien Isolation. While not a ton of people played the original Halo Wars, it was still definitely an underrated cult classic, and this announcement of Halo Wars 2 is completely fan service and so awesome. And at number one, we have Mafia 3. Mafia 3 made a huge explosion at E3 with a great cinematic announcement trailer as well as some looks at gameplay. This time around, the Mafia formula is kind of flipped on its head with this game taking place in the late 1960s in New Orleans, Louisiana. Players take control of a black Vietnam War veteran coming home named Lincoln, who's apparently got a bit of a trip on his shoulder and a problem with the Italian Mafia. This leads to the players teaming up with other local criminals and building his own criminal empire. Mafia 3 does look like a lot of fun, but we're not gonna see it for a while, but the premise is undeniably exciting and the game could tell a really awesome story because it's just such a unique setting. So those are the best new games from Gamescom 2015, but we got a couple of bonus games that we couldn't include on this list, including The Long Journey Home, Elite Dangerous Horizons, and Kingdom. We want to know what you guys are most excited about from Gamescom, some new surprises that you guys were really into. Let's talk about it down in the comments below. And if you did have a good time, maybe like this video because that helps us out. And if you're new, subscribing is awesome because we put out videos every single day if you're bored. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.